It's just understanding more of concussion and head health. You oh, know? yeah. No, I agree with that. That We, we didn't know much about it that's back not, in the day. That's not something you can say you regret because nobody knew about nobody it. Nobody knew. But I mean, looking back on some things like when uh, there was a time where Costa and I, when I was training for my first amateur oh, here we title. Go. I know what you're going to say. Drinking yeah. water, bro. Yeah. But it worked. It's you right. know, a little bit. You were dehydrated. So Dehydration. a lot of it was... Um, so I used to play university football, okay? So people think right away, oh, what did you play? Linebacker. Were you a, a end, fullback? Yeah. Were you a running back? Quarterback. I was, like, yeah. uh, I was a kicker and punter. But it makes sense because look at my low kicks. I'm punting legs all day. My hip power was one of my best strengths. When I played soccer, I could do, you know, I could launch the ball. I, I can shoot hard. But that was my strength was my hip power, my kicking. It would have been cooler if you are a quarterback. John. I know. It would have yeah. been so much cooler. But how many Italian quarterbacks do you see now, man? There you go. You could have been uh, the, first the first Italian quarterback. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I was a kicker and punter, but we went on a team that really sucked. I played for the University of Toronto, and I played for five years, and we won a total of, Danny, guess how many games we won in a total of five years? I like to believe at least five. Costa? I know Please that. I know that. Yeah, so we won zero games. <laughs> you in won five zero years. games. Canadian zero. record. Canadian record. But what? think about it. As a kicker and punter, it was fun for me because we weren't good. I got to punt a lot and I got to kick a lot. So for me, it was kind of like good. I was the leading scorer one year. Uh, two you years. You were leading scorer as a kicker. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, they kick a lot, right? Oh, Remember, boy. I'm kicking a lot. Three points here, field goal there, point afters. Like you know, I punt through the end zone, yeah. get a point there. So I ended up being the leader score, uh, the leading scorer. So it was cool for me i actually because we weren't really good i had to make tackles a lot so that's how i originally broke my arm like i got a huge i don't know if people can see here i have a huge scar here you got some screws in there and i got uh, a plate and six screws that was actually i was playing against university of ottawa i was making a tackle a helmet uh, i think it was from my own team actually as i was taking the guy down look as i'm taking him down like a double leg <laughs> Um, as I'm taking him down, I got a, uh, another one of my teammates assisted with the tackle, dove in head first, and I think that's how it broke. So I ended up getting surgery there, which that was supposed to, you know, derail me from my career. The doctors told me I'll never fight again. Here I am crying Acosta and everybody. So that healed, gets better. And then one of the games in Queens, I was doing a uh, punt. My punt got blocked, and I'm looking for the ball to go return it. As I go to pick it up, boom, someone just crushes me from the side hits my head, my head spins out. I'm sick on the way home. I'm feeling nauseous. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to drink something. I keep wanting to throw it up. At this point, I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. Again, we don't know. And at that point, I'm like, oh, okay, it's a concussion. The only thing they tell you about concussions is don't go to sleep at that point. Don't go to sleep. Well, if my body wants me to go to sleep, it's probably a good thing that I need it's to rest my myth. brain. It's actually a myth. It's a big time myth. Yeah. So what happens is, so I'm trying to stay up. Two, three weeks later, I had my third amateur fight. Third amateur fight it was in Niagara Falls. I was going to bring up Niagara. So I'm, I'm fighting this. My opponent backed out. And all of a sudden, they were like, hey, do you, there's no one here. But there's, we asked someone in the crowd. And this guy said yes. I was like, I don't know. It's my third amateur fight. I looked at him. And I'm like, OK, he looked like a nerd. I'm going to say it as it is. He looked like a nerd. He had like glasses on, a plaid shirt buttoned up, tall and skinny looking. I was like, OK, yeah, I'll fight him. I don't care. Like, I, you know, I had that fight mentality. I'll fight anybody. I don't care. I'm trained. I'm prepared. My family's here. I have guests and my training partners. So I fought him anyways. My coaches at that time go to see him weigh in. And they didn't tell me till after, like, as soon as he took off his shirt, abs on abs on abs and ripped. And he came out like, like, like he's listening to heavy metal music, storming into the ring. Like and twice I'm just the like, size of Joe. Oh, my God. I don't know how he God. made it. Yeah. And I'm, a, I'm fighting an amateur at 185 pounds at that time. Yeah. Big boy, ripped tall. I was like, all right. So we went at it in the first round. And I remember hitting him with a Superman punch. I backed him into the corner. And I was like, okay, I start blasting off shots i thought i was going to go for a finish the bell rang the uh the referee at the time bear hugs me to stop hitting him so as soon as i stopped him buddy must have been out or didn't hear the bell and he gave me a hard one two snap yeah. snap my head snaps back twice next thing you know like i'm walking around the ring i don't even remember the second and third round this was maybe two three weeks after that initial head concussion i got in that football yeah, game no business being in a ring. no reason being in a ring no two weeks that. after three weeks after i don't know what the time difference was about two weeks probably get hit after that don't remember the second and third round i'm trying to eat johnny rockets from the i won the fight yeah. um, i was 11 and 0 as an amateur by the way and then next thing you know is i'm throwing up johnny rockets i couldn't eat burgers so i'm driving home 
And then I was like, after that, I got offered to fight for the provincial title. So I'm here for the Ontario Cam Tau title, and I'm training for this fight. And I'm like, man, every time I'm sparring, I'm getting headaches. I take a jab, I get a headache, my head hurts. So then mine and Costa's uh, thing was like, Joe, maybe you're dehydrated. Let's drink more water. No, it wasn't because of that. You were just like, your head was hurting. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I was like, like, I kept getting headaches. I didn't yeah, know you're what just it like was. Your we didn't know it was post concussion. No, like, but, no one knew about but that. At that back point, then. we just drank more water, and which was a good thing, and it helped to well, cushion my brain. It a either bit. helped or you just got better. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, either way, but it's, back in the day, it was called. We your didn't bell. know. It was called you. You rung your bell. You know, you get in there, you work through it, which is the absolute wrong way to do. Totally things. the wrong way. Now people know, so it's not like things I wish I'd changed because we couldn't change it we went with the best information we had at the time if we were to start again or to future fighters yeah you pay more time like even with your sparring here yeah, so but i wish i did we used to I didn't say i could yeah. have done but i wish Fair i enough. did it. we like we used to head hunt and sparring For sure. um, back and then you just you know you laugh you do whatever but now it's like you go as hard and fast as you can to the body into the head you could careful you you go fast you snap it back right yeah. um nobody there's a lot of gyms out there that still do that hit to the head because I was, I was doing some, uh, it was ridiculous, the, the misconceptions out there. So I was uh, at, a, at another gym doing some pad work, you know, Joe. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> it was by my work. Beef, <laughs> beef. <laughs> You're not allowed to go anywhere else. No. Look, 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 look at him. He's upset. His face I cleared, is red. I cleared he it with Joe. I, I cleared it with Joe. He it's okay. Pre-cleared. And he wore a bazooka shirt to I wore, training. Yeah, yeah. So, Just so no, no, know. it's good. You know, there's other, you know, and uh, so we were there doing some, because it was beside my work, and I had to go for lunch, Dan. I can't come yeah. all the way down here. No, uh, it's okay, bro. It's all right. Yeah, we get it. We get it. I didn't, yeah. yeah. So, so we we're there, and, and so the kid, I was, we we're doing a little sparring, and this kid, he wasn't that new, but he wasn't. And he's like, "Oh, you know, hit me harder." I'm like, "No, what are you talking about?" He's like, "A vlog." He's like, "I want to get used to the hits in the head," and I'm like, "Bro, you cannot get used to hits in the head." I go, "You only get worse," and that's it's such a another common misconception that trainer kids coming in training are always like, "Oh, I want to get hit used to the hit in the head." Again, no, it's not a muscle. Like when you tear it down, you build it up. Your head only has so many hits in it, okay? And it could be one. Mm. Um, look at guy, your, your chin gets worse. The more times you get dung in the head, the more times you get knocked out, the more times you get knocked around, it, it shortens that lifespan in your head. You want to protect your head as much as possible. These guys with, there's, there's freaks of the rule with glass jaws like Mark Hunt, or not glass jaws, or granite jaws. Granite, like, yeah, yeah. Brr. Like Mark Hunt. You're no Mark Hunt, sorry. Yep. And if you are, you'll find out real quick. Yeah. Um, you can and you can't train yourself to be Mark Hunt. You either can or you can't. So but I think you need that hard sparring still. You need you still hard need sparring. You, but you can't hard spar to the you, don't, you can do that without hard sparring to the In camps and stuff, I've realized, like, again, you got to remember, as a coach now, I'm changing. I'm still learning with times. So I kind of stayed away from the hard sparring. But I think there needs to be, with the right people, there needs to be that hard yeah. sparring. You need Good someone sparring. trying to rip your head. Sometimes, I'm sorry, like, you need to be able to, if I haven't felt a hard shot, and blocked off my guard. Next thing you know, I'm in a fight and someone hits a hard shot. Then you kind of get nervous. You kind of need that. Okay, so you need to, it's about the teeter totter, finding that balance because you, know, you still need level, it at the highest but level. But here it is: sparring is a skill that no one learns. Top level guys. So if you go into the ring with another, oh, still uh, with animal, me. Like even if it's hard, I'm not going to give no, you. No, but that's the thing. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You can go a hard sparring with guy getting ready to fight, and you'll hit his guard. Or, or I'll hit his shoulder. Or I'll punch his, his arm you'll on purpose. You're not going to take him out with a. You're not going to knock him out. And that's the difference. So, and, and two, two top level. So, if top level guys are not trying to knock each other up, but they're going hard and but doing it safely, why would an amateur or you know a low level amateur just learning is going to try and take somebody's head off when you can't control? Yeah, it? the level makes a difference. You the have right to learn partners sparring, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so it's like I'm not saying go in there and, and play. I another thing is people go in there and spar too soft. They're slow. It's like this. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you? You're just wasting your time. But a part of me, what makes a good coach to me, it's more of how. What do you gain from sparring? So a lot of time you gain the timing, you gain confidence, you gain, you know, strategy, you gain concepts, understanding, you know. So how can I let my fighters learn this without having to spar? So this is why I think I pride myself in creating good drills, creating good scenarios where they can work these concepts without having to spar all the time, yeah. which I think good coaching instead of a, a coach, because some fighters need to fight a hundred times to gain these skills where someone like me and my coach in my upbringing i only needed 13 fights where other guys needed 100 fights you need to kind of learn in training instead of always 
fighting and not learning as you go, like a good coach is going to say, okay, like instead of me, I had to take a lot of headshots to realize, okay, maybe just the shell defense isn't enough. I took a lot of shots to understood I have to move my head a little bit more. I have to use my footwork a little bit. So you learn. So now I don't want my guys just to have one form of defense like the way I had. I'm developing different ways and it's through drilling, it's through different timing. So you kind of have to create things. Yeah, that it's way. that mix. I think nothing replaces sparring. But you have to know what you're doing going to sparring. So those drills, like you say, turning them into muscle memory. So they're not thinking they're in there and they see the scenarios and then applying it yep. to the sparring because nothing yeah. replaces. Or play sparring. You have yeah. to play sparring. Nothing you got to play the game. Nothing replaces drills. Nothing replaces sparring. And nothing replaces real fights. So yep. as you know, everyone can be the look amazing in sparring, but they get into a ring for a real fight. It all changes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it but all those changes. are things you can't teach, right? No, That's you, also it's, you can't it's, teach. and it goes back to experience. Experience is everything in life. You know, you can, you can read all about you want. You can try and learn everything you want, but until you get that experience, you're just a nobody, yeah. you know? Well, back to quickly on the concussions. I'll just give yeah. uh, a quick rant on it, on what I do with my guys, and then we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. But uh, quick thing I would recommend, yes, you still need a lot of water, but uh, take the time, guys. Rest. I mean, that's the most important thing. If you think you got a concussion, please just take some time off. And you're going to realize that a lot of times your heart rate changes. I mean, you have to realize that, you know, you need to manage your heart rate. You don't want to be spiking your heart rate after a concussion. You want to keep yourself slow, build up your heart rate, release really slow and recovered. You need it to heal. It's a muscle. Like when you pull your knee, you're not going to go squat the next day. You need to take your time. Don't even get your heart rate up. Rest is number one. Lots of fluids. Um, fish oils are really important. And I'm OCD again. I would go a lot of research on ketogenic diets and brain injuries, something I'm into. CBD oils, great. But ultimately, rest and don't get hit. You need that time to rest in between. Go see someone. You're going to see someone if you have a broken arm. Why aren't you going to see a doctor for concussions for your brain? Yeah. You know, and then let them do your Well, the protocol. problem is, the problem with that with me, it's kind of like, even if you tell them like, oh, I bumped my head, the first thing they're going to do, you're going to go through a CT or an MRI, and then you have to wait three, four weeks. The time you get an MRI here, your brain's healed here, but what basically. But what if it's found something bigger, Joe? Yeah, like, but that's every day. You get hit in your head every day. I know, but you if know? you have a concussion, go in there and get a CT scan. Make sure there's not a, what if what if you think it's something and it's a but brain the bleed? But okay, the understanding is, what is a concussion, Costa? Nah, it's anything. That's the number one I thing. Know, like you. Can I'm take not a brain doctor. my my uh I'm this, not a neurologist. my goal is my goal is for this channel is to find a I know someone I want it's uh someone I went through he was older than me in university he's a concussion specialist he works at UFT at the highest level and he's a brain and concussion specialist I want to try to see if I can get him on and just kind of see what he suggests get some of the new research so that's something yeah uh, that'll be interesting instead of asking me I don't know yeah. No, yeah. but I mean those are the simple things you can do but yeah, I recommend rest good good nutrition don't train keep your heart rate down I, yeah rest lots of water your fish oils are important good fats in your diet I mean number four do. 